Hello, my name is Margaret Adele, and welcome to a rambling discussion about that one thing that plagues all bookish people on the internet and how I am tackling it, a gigantic TBR. It is not uncommon on the booktornet to have a TBR of hundreds and hundreds of books, and we all kind of know that we're probably never going to read all those books, but we just can't take them off. But I decided that 2022 was the year that I was finally going to tackle this, if for no other reason than I didn't want the stress of having such a gigantic TBR hanging over my head, and also I wanted to make it easier for myself to pick books when I wanted to read something. So I am going to go through the process of how I unhauled over 150 books in less than three months. Now, you might find some advice here to use for it, uh, but I am not purporting to be like, here's how to do it, because the way I bring in books into my collection uh, tends to be fairly unique uh, to a lot of people's, and so I don't want to be like, you should do this, when it wouldn't even apply to your life. Uh, but if you do find something helpful from this video, please let me know down in the comments. So, the ways that I get most of the books that come into my life are review copies, which are actually separate from this. Uh, review copies have their own little mini system that I operate on. But it's one of the ways. Uh, then I will normally either buy the ebook, download a free version of the ebook from offers like BookBub or author giveaways, or I will buy them from secondhand stores. Occasionally, I will also buy them uh, from traditional stores, but not often, and that's usually for very special cases. So as a result, the vast majority of the issue here for me was all of the ebooks that I had downloaded for free off BookBub. I've mentioned this service before, but BookBub is this ebook service that sends you daily deals for ebooks, and oftentimes they'll have free ones, and those tend to be indie books. They tend to be the self published ones. So for a long time, before I had the connection to indie authors in that community that I do now, that was the biggest way for me to get indie books and know that they were indie. So as a result, I would download virtually all of the free ones off of BookBub, regardless of how interested I was in the actual premise. And so I had this gigantic TBR, and I didn't even know how big it was until I finally sat down, and using Goodreads, I wanted my want-to-read shelf to accurately represent all of the books that I owned. And at first it was a little bit difficult, because I had to do both the physical books, which meant I literally had to have like my laptop open, sitting in front of the shelves, just double checking. And then also I had to go through uh, just the Kindle app. I thought about also doing my Nook app, but I don't really use it that much anymore. So obviously there's no books still on there that I'm like desperate for. Uh, so I stuck to Kindle and I updated everything. And then I had to go through and delete everything off of the list that was added that I don't already own so that the list as is, would be the books I own to read. And that list came up to 430, which is a lot, but at least I had an accurate number to work with. So then I went through and I was like, okay, it's time to do the unhauling. Now, unhauling is a lot of painful honesty with yourself about what you're actually going to read. Because I feel like a lot of us like to think that we read a very wide range of books, when in reality, a lot of us will stick to specific genres, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I had this thing where I would keep adding books for genres that I only read occasionally, but then I'd get dozens of books when I might read a couple of that genre a year. And I was like, okay, this is pointless. So I, I nailed down what some of those genres were, uh, the biggest one being Highlander romance. I don't read Highlander romance. I've never read Outlander, never gotten into that fandom. So like, it's whatever to me, but I had so many downloaded for free. So I started clearing those out first. And, and basically that entire genre was just, and my thought process is, is that if I decide later on for some reason, oh, I'm really feeling a Highlander romance right now, I can do research and pick one that I specifically know that I'll want rather than trying to pick one at random off of the ones I've already downloaded just because they didn't sound bad, which was a big part of this as well. 
when I was going through. Because um, once I stopped with the genres, like I, all the genres I had left were ones that I theoretically liked and read enough that I, I would need to have a decent chunk on standby for, which honestly... I'm not even sure I did that correctly. I probably could do with unhauling a bit more of the horror and urban fantasy that I have because I read more of those than Highlander romances, but probably not enough to justify how many books I have on my TBR still. More unhauling yet to be done. However, uh, the next part got even harder because now I couldn't just look at the genre. I had to get in the nitty gritty of the synopsis. For the longest time, especially with review books, but also with the regular books I would get, I had this issue where I would basically <laughs> treat the synopsis as if it was an automatic yes unless something in the synopsis popped up to be a no, like a chosen one's trope or, or a love triangle or what have you. Uh, and, and I had to kind of reverse that in my head and make it into more of a, okay, they treat it like an automatic no, Unless there is something in the synopsis that makes it a yes. Is there a trope, an idea, a story set up that I'm like, ooh, yes, this, please, that I want to keep this. And if I was ever on the fence in that synopsis, that's when I went down and I looked into the reviews. I actually don't read a lot of reviews a lot of the time. And I don't usually take the star ratings much into account just because... You know, I've read books that I absolutely adored that were rated on the lower end because of X, Y, and Z. And some people will rate things low because they didn't like the fact that there were gay characters. So, like, you can't always trust that star rating. But, basically, I looked at the reviews for more information on what was happening in this story. For example, uh, when talking polyamory, I prefer more of a group dynamic between all of the characters where there's romantic connections between all of the characters as opposed to a paramour metamor setup so if i have like an mmf uh polyamory romance i would look down in the reviews to be like okay do the men interact with each other what's that relationship like and if they said no that gets unhauled or if i don't know something like there is a, a plus size character and I check down in the reviews is weight loss a big part of the journey. Like basically I use the reviews to find out a little bit more info than was in the synopsis to find out basically is it as bad as I'm afraid it is based on the synopsis or do they not go there? <laughs> I need to know whether or not it went there, there in, in certain aspects and reviews will usually tell you that. Um, but basically through doing this in uh, long stretches, but multiple times, I didn't just do this all in one sitting. That would have been exhausting. Uh, I managed to unhaul over 150 books. And that's kind of an estimation because as I was doing this, I was also adding more books to my TBR through things like getting review books or following my Lower the TBR challenge. I have been under a self-imposed challenge since the beginning of this year, wherein I cannot get a new book until I have read two that I already own. Basically meaning that my TBR will continue to drop steadily. And this can get a little bit mucked up because I don't consider review books to be a part of that. So the review books are a separate entity wherein I collect review books without having to read the two previously, but once I hit 15, I have to close until I have 10 read and I am down to five on the list and then I open again. Uh, so that's its own separate thing, but that also means that it was affecting my uh, to read list. So it was kind of going up and down, but as best I can tell right now, I have unhauled over 150 books. My to read list is currently sitting at 283 or maybe 284, one of those. But it is a nice giant chunk of change there. However, I'm still not done. <laughs> I can I intend to continue. My ultimate end goal, I believe, for the end of this year would be to get it down to under 200. And then I intend to keep the TBR challenge up for as long as possible until honestly, under 100 would be the end goal that I would finally open myself up to just buying anything again. And I, I've talked to a lot of people who find unhauling very stressful, and it can be at first, but once you kind of set the rules 
for yourself, like, okay, I'm unhauling anything that has X, I'm unhauling anything from this genre, I'm unhauling anything that has this trope. Like, it gets a lot easier. And also, I found that the more effort I put in to picking my books, the more likely I am to enjoy them. I've learned this a little bit with review books because I've noticed that the more harsh, I guess, the more picky I am about what review books I pick, the more likely it is to be a five star. Not entirely. I've actually had to put up a two star recently, but I've taken that mindset and finally put into my non-review books, Re like basically researching more and looking into authors and continuing series more steadily and making sure that this this book has decent, at least if not decent star ratings, then at least the reviews echo things that I would want to see in a book. Uh, so I think I could manage that. I think if I stick to my challenge, get better at reviewing books, and do another round of unhauling, especially with some of those horror and urban fantasy books, I could get my review list down to under 200 by the end of 2022. And honestly, I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about everything that I've unhauled. It feels so much less stressful. Uh, now, the downside is here is that um, participating in readathons might be a little bit harder because I do have a smaller pool to pick from. But in that instance, I could always just do the research and get newer books and again, find more books I like. I don't have to just focus on pre-owned ones. Um, and of course, also, there's always the, once I start reading a book that I kept on my TBR, there's always the chance that I will just really dislike the reading style and DNF it and unhaul it that way. So who knows? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make it by summer, but let's not set up any too big of a goal right now. This was theoretically supposed to be my year of rest, but also, ironically, this was really restful. I found a place of zen unhauling books. But uh, do you unhaul regularly? Do you have any unhaul rules? Let me know down in the comments below. And with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.